So what I've done is I've taken apart the old gasket or taken all the pieces off. I'm missing a little bit down here. But I just run your finger along the engine casing and the engine to make sure that you've got all the pieces off and that it's smooth to the touch. You want a, a clean seal for your new gasket, which looks pretty correct. It's a little bit thicker, especially around here. A little bit worried about the fit and fitment, but again, the best, or rather, the cheapest eBay can provide. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just going over with my finger the whole thing to make sure I got all the little pieces of remaining gasket. Just use my fingernail, clean it all up. My fingernail is nice and soft against the metal, but hard enough to get rid of gasket leftovers. While I've got this thing taken apart still, I'm going to test just to make sure that I haven't got a short on my new stator lines. All I'm going to do is just power, nothing. 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 Yeah, so we're good. Okay, so getting the gasket on is being a bit of a pain in the butt. <sighs> There's a little thing here that you can use to hook it on. It, it fits well. It's just my new stator wires need to be bent down and stay in place while I put it on. And that's needing three hands. Using the shifter sprocket as sort of a guide, as soon as I got it on there, the thing just sort of went funk. So now it's just a matter of putting all the uh, things back in and uh, filling it with oil. See if she's holding. So you remember this. Um, I've already taken these two out just because they're the easiest ones. And what I'm going to do is put them in and then sort of follow around until it is all back in place or at least all of them are in there a little bit. And then I will snug them all up and fill her with oil just to see if she holds. There have been a couple of places here and for the one in here where the gasket doesn't quite line up what I've been doing is just moving it into place with my Swiss Army knife. For future reference this is a forehand job so my beautiful wife the permanent roommate was able to help me with the last one which was this one down here but I think it might have just been whichever the last one happened to be. I used she held the flashlight is it this one I used the tweezers to get in between the cover and the engine to grab the thing. I was able to use my other hand to help me pivot while these ones pinched, bring it up enough, and then my wife was able to put that through the gasket and onto the thread and then just tightening them up. And now I'm just going to tighten them all up and fill it with oil and then have a beer. So there's a drip. I didn't put the gasket in quite properly and I am dripping oil and it's more than a little. I drop every few seconds so it's not a Harley. I can't just leave it. So day three of my four maybe five hour project. What I found is my leak is coming from in here. And what's happened is you can probably make it out but if you can't, is that the gasket got twisted somehow and it's, I can't just pull it back into place. I'm gonna have to figure out if I can get something in there, like a butter knife or something, just to fold it flat and then press it back together tightly. I haven't taken the whole gasket right back off, but I did have to redrop the oil. So as you can see, I've got a fairly decent view of the gasket there now. When I looked under before, I just saw metal against metal. So I think it had got folded and pushed in Okay, so I haven't poured all the oil back in yet for the simple reason of I want to see if it holds first. I got a piece of white cardboard underneath, so we just wait a bit and see if we have a drip. Full of oil, no drops that I can see. Clutch, working, starter. Working. Now we test the voltage.
It's working! It's going up slowly because it's charging the battery and I'm reading voltage off the battery. Look at that. I am dripping oil again. Bloody hell. We are on day six of my four, maybe five hour project. So the problem with the gasket wasn't necessarily just the gasket. The gasket was probably seated correctly, even though it was leaking. It was leaking out from back here. And this is where the wiring grommet uh, interface is in there. And it wasn't being pressed down. The cheap eBay replacement I got is just a little bit loose. And when this is running, it's under pressure. And it was just forcing whatever oil was splashing up out and dripping down. I thought it was coming out of this one. It wasn't. So advice permatex this stuff just saturate your uh, gasket with it and then you place it nicely on the outer case and it just holds it in place uh, while you put it in snug it in hand tight keep pressure on this one pinch your finger your old finger will grow back don't worry uh, another lesson learned have a friend who knows how to do this because i got lost i could not figure this out uh, the other advice I have is just to take it to a bloody shop. Because, I mean, the money I saved on the stator and gasket, I bought back in headaches and stress. So, just, you know, this one was a bit more than I, I had planned. Anyway, uh, yeah. But no drips, which is good. Still no drips. So, I am confident that it is now properly fixed on a perfect day for a ride. Raining. Bonus content, so I forgot to test in my last video, or forgot to do the full test, is that while you are touching ground to power here, just to make sure that you can get continuity through each of the lines, you should also test touching power to power, and then touching ground to all these, and you should get nothing. So that should stay one, meaning you can't get anything through infinite resistance. And the reason for that is that there's a bunch of diodes in here and diodes just allow electricity to flow in one direction but not the other. So by touching ground to power and then powering these things, what you're doing is completing the circuit and that shows that it's working properly. By connecting power to power and then touching ground, you're showing that electricity does not flow in the other direction. So that's how alternating current gets transformed to direct current. Fun fact, if you press this, it engages the starter motor. even with the ignition off. The mystery of the blue wire is solved. It's not a ground wire. It's the neutral sense. <laughs>